Good morning. My name is Reverend Antoine Shine, Senior Pastor here at BB Memorial Cathedral, where we witness the word, worship the Lord, walk in love is our mission. We are glad that you decided to join us for in-person and virtual worship today, and we pray that you are blessed by today's cathedral experience. send your children as they will be protected and they will learn of the word of God and they will be joyous and have some fun. Is that all right? Amen. As we move into service this morning, if you could rise to your feet, for the Bible declares this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be grateful and thankful. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again. For this opportunity to be in your sanctuary, we thank you in advance for the power of the preach word that shall come forth. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you have done for us. We continue to lift up your name and we continue to appreciate all that you continue to do for us and our families. Heavenly Father, we don't take for granted another opportunity that we woke up this morning. So come on and put your hands together, for the Lord is good. I said the Lord is still good, regardless of what it looks like or what it could have been. It could have been worse, but Heavenly Father, we thank you. Hallelujah for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the outpouring of your spirit. We thank you for angels that are dispatched round and about us and our families. We thank you for healing this morning. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for transformation in the atmosphere of this sanctuary and in our lives. And we continue to honor you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
you all. So at this time, if you will stand for the scripture reading of this morning and the affirmation of faith. This morning scripture comes from Leviticus chapter 20 verse 26. You are to be holy to me because I the Lord am holy and I have set you apart from the nations to be my own. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. And the affirmation of faith, the modern creed. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare together. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of deliverance of sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as a divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in the time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself and the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. You may be seated at this time. Before I begin our announcements for this morning, I must thank each and every one of you all that called, sent the text message, prayed for myself and my family as we were grieving over the life loss of our family's matriarch, my grandmother, 
who passed away um, on Good Friday. And we were, I was actually in town to celebrate her 80th birthday, which would have been on Easter. And so I am just glad that I was able to experience her life because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be who I am today. So to Lily Mae, thank you so much. And I know you and James E are smiling down upon us today. for our announcements for today, April 14th, 2024. Please save the day for our men and women's annual day, which will take place on May 19th. We will celebrate our men and women's annual day with a hybrid worship service at 10 a.m. and a musical at 3 p.m. The musical will feature the voices of BB Reunion Choir, which is the choir that sang during the 90s. So for those that were in the voices of BB uh, Reunion Choir, please look forward to rehearsals coming up soon. Every second Sunday is our children's church. If you have any children who are in the sanctuary today, since today is the second Sunday, you can take them over into the education building for those services. Uh, once again, Children's Church will occur every second Sunday of the month over in the Education Building during regular service hours. And the Children's Choir will sing every fourth Sunday of the month. So, if you would like your children to be involved, please see Sister Erica Pringle. But we have a lot in store for our youth over the coming months. So, once again, every second Sunday of the month will be Children's Church, and every fourth Sunday of the month, the children's choir will sing. And I know we are in the month of April, but we are also focusing on back to school time as well. Between now and the annual conference in August, we will collect new or gently used shoes. Let me repeat that. New or gently used shoes for children going back to school later this year. There'll be collection bins in the North X. If you have any questions, please contact our office. Um, today after church, the women's ministry will meet here in the chapel and next week after service, the men's ministry will meet. So once again, uh, the women's ministry will meet today after service in the chapel and next week, the men's ministry will meet uh, after service in the chapel. We have two uh, homegoing services this week as well. The first is of Sister Dottie Duncan, whose service will be Friday at CP Bannon Mortuary at 11 a.m. So Dottie Duncan's service will be this Friday at CP Bannon Mortuary at 11 a.m. And uh, Sister Vivian Coit, the mother of Sister Michelle Coit. Uh, wake will be Friday at Fuché at 7 p.m. And her funeral will be this Saturday at 10 a.m. here at BB. So once again, for Sister Vivian Coit, those services are Friday for the wake at Fuché at 7 p.m. And the uh, funeral will be here at BB at this Saturday at 10 a.m. Don't forget, our weekly service is Wednesday morning prayer at 7 a.m. virtually and working the word Bible study at 6 p.m. also virtually and Sunday school and new members class at 9 a.m. over in the education building and of course our hybrid services at 10 a.m. And with that, please give it up for our senior pastor, the Reverend Antoine Shine. Come on and magnify the name of the Lord with me. The Bible says, let everything that has breath uh, praise you the name of the Lord. Amen. You may uh, 
be seated in his presence. We certainly thank God uh, yet again for all he's done. We want to make sure that uh, we continue to uh, keep uplifted uh, all of our members who have gone through uh, the process of grief and loss in this in this season. And I believe that the wake uh, for uh, Sister Vivian Coit is it from e 11 a.m. to 4 p.m.? Am I correct? All right, that is 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then the funeral service will be here Saturday morning uh, starting at uh, 10 a.m. And so we certainly thank God yet again for all that he has done. We are excited uh, about May 19th. Now we're going to switch it up a little bit. We'll actually have the Men and Women's Day Observation Sunday uh, later in June. Uh, but May 19th also happens to be Pentecost Sunday. Amen. Anybody grateful for Pentecost? Uh, and so we're still having the reunion concert uh, that that Sunday at 3 p.m., but we're going to be doing something different on that Sunday morning on Pentecost Sunday. We're going to have what we call a community baptism service, uh, and initially what that is is you don't have to be a member of the church to be baptized, but as long as you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, then we're going to baptize you. And so you can start registering now. Maybe you have some family uh, who doesn't have a church home, but they believe in Jesus and they want to be baptized. So on that Sunday, May 19th, we're going to be baptizing anyone who wants to be baptized. And so to get more information, you can call the front office uh, and they will direct you in terms of registering. So again, that is May 19th. And then at 3 p.m., amen, our reunion, concert. Amen. Thank you, Brother Gregory Cole, for helping uh, lead the way in that. Uh, and so we certainly thank God again. Uh, I believe there was a, uh, uh, we had a birthday yesterday, one of our very own, Minister Erica Pringle. Amen. And so this, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, Brother Casey, will you come here? I, I want you to sing happy birthday. Amen. I'm a, I'm a <laughs> Amen. I thought it was only befitting. I couldn't ask another man to sing and you hear. Amen. Come on, let's bless the name of the Lord. Anybody ready to go another round higher in worship? Anybody just glad to be in the land of the living? One more time. Come on, purpose. Help 
Tennessee sing it. Said you gave your life for me. You gave your life for me at Calvary. So I can have life eternally. So I can have life eternally. You paid a price that I can never repay. So I'll live my life loving you every day. So I live my life loving you every day. Take it from the top. Oh Jesus. Jesus. Oh, oh how I love you. How I love you. Oh how I worship. How I worship. Ooh, oh yes. And adore and you. Adore you. Oh, oh, oh say it again. Jesus. Jesus. It says, in your presence is where I want to live. In your presence is where I want to live. Everything I have my life I give. Everything I have my life I give. I'm an instrument. I'm an instrument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I live my so good. Say, oh.
worship right there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How I love you. Praise him right there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody love him today? Anybody just worship him today? I dare somebody just take a few seconds just to give him your best praise, not your leftover praise. But is there anybody that can say, Jesus, I love you? Is there anybody that will go ahead and let Jesus know that you worship him? And that without him, you would be nothing. You could do nothing. Is there anybody in the house today or even watching online that will go ahead and open up your mouth and say, Jesus, I love you. the 
word to your people and allow them to know that you are still God and God all by yourself and that you're able to do exceeding and abundant above all that we could ever ask or think of. Now have your way in this place. Now speak a word to your people today to allow them to know that you are still God. In the matchless, the marvelous, the miracle working name of Jesus, we do pray and the people of God said amen and amen again. The scriptorial text which comes from the 16th Psalm verses 1 through 6 for your hearing today the psalmist David penned these words preserve me O God for in you I put my trust O my soul you have said to the Lord you are my Lord my goodness is nothing apart from you as for the saints who are on the earth they are excellent ones in whom all is my delight their sorrow shall be multiplied who hasten after another God. Their drink offering of blood will not offer nor take up their names on my lips. O Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup. You maintain my lot. The lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. For just a few brief moments today, we're preaching a two-part series entitled serving the Lord will pay off somebody look at your neighbor and say neighbor serving the Lord will pay off anybody believe that today you may be seated in his presence that serving the Lord will pay off anybody that recognizes that your labor is not in vain uh, that when you serve the Lord the Lord has a way of blessing you and serving the Lord goes beyond these four walls we have to make sure that we begin to serve the Lord by serving our families We've got to make sure that we are serving the Lord by serving our communities. And every now and then in the course of your service, you can get tired and you can get weary. But the reason why I like the psalmist here today by the name of David, David who is a familiar character in scripture. Uh, many scholars have titled, and this psalm has been called the Mikkum of David. The title Mikkum um, commonly is understood as golden. And some psalmists and some, some scholars and theologians believe that when David wrote the 16th psalm, that he was on the run from King Saul who wanted to take him out. And because David was on the run, uh, many believe that he wrote this psalm in secrecy that he could not tell everybody how he felt. So he began to pen these words. And every now and then we'll discover, we'll go through some adverse circumstances and some situations in life. But we have to be like David, even in the midst of everything that we are going through we still have to learn how to serve the Lord because in serving God, God will not only bless those whom you serve, but God will bless you. Many scholars believe that David was in a cave when he wrote this again on the run from Saul. But what is interesting is, watch this, is that even though David was on the run from Saul, God still bless David. Is there anybody that recognizes that even in spite of your circumstance, even in spite of your situations, that you are still blessed? 
Anybody can go ahead and thank God that regardless of what you are going through, that God is still blessing you. Well, I've got three things I want to drop in your spirit, and then I'm going to roll on out of your way, and you still got time to go make brunch. Amen. Check this out. The first thing that I like about the psalmist David today is that David allows us to understand that when we serve the Lord, we have a place of refuge. When David spoke of a place of refuge, he was expressing the idea of finding safety and protection in God. Imagine having a place that is fortified where it is secure that no one can come in and harm you. And David understood that when he served God, that God had become his place of refuge. And because sometimes in the Old Testament, when somebody was on the run, God would ordain certain cities for safety for that person to go to. And what I like about it today, watch this, David didn't run to Facebook. David didn't run to Instagram. David didn't run to Twitter. David didn't run to tell this person and tell that person about his sorrows, but he ran to tell the Lord. Can I submit to somebody today that you got to stop running the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, telling all of your business and learn how to tell it to the Lord in prayer. And what I have discovered is watch this. God won't tell your business, but if you tell this person and they tell that person and then they tell that person, then the story gets all twisted. Up. But is there anybody that has learned how to take it to the Lord in prayer and leave it there? David found safety in telling God about his trouble. David understood that God was the only one who could do something about his predicament and his circumstance and his situation. And we have to learn how to go to the Lord in prayer and learn how to keep it there because the reality is, watch this, not everybody is that concerned about what you are going through. <laughs> see, see, sometimes people are only interested in what you're going through so they can have something to talk about. <laughs> and so you got to learn how not to have, watch this, safety and refuge in the wrong places. Can I go ahead and push the point further? Watch this. You will not find safety and refuge in the club. And can I go ahead and push the point even further? You won't find safety and refuge in a relationship that's not yours. Somebody said, I'm messing today. <laughs> well, see, the problematic issue sometimes, watch this, is that we turn to the wrong people, places, and things thinking that we will find some safety and some refuge when those are places that the enemy has set up to destroy you. And so David understood that he had to take it to the Lord in prayer. Now watch this. David is not a perfect man by any means. David had some flaws. David had some issues. But what I like about David and the reason why David was so blessed, because even in spite of David's issues, he still learned how to serve the Lord. And we got to get to a place where we still serve God, even in spite of our hiccups, even in spite of our circumstances and our situation. So David goes to the Lord and he lets, the, he lets them know that God had become his place of refuge. God had become his place of safety. He knows that God will protect him. He knows that God will lead him and guide him regardless of what the circumstance might be. And can I submit
submit to you today, watch this, that when the hand of the Lord is on you, it doesn't matter who's after you. If God be for you, then he's more than the world against you. That's the reason why Saul could not kill David was because God's hand was on David. And even though David was uncomfortable being on the run, he recognized not that it was the cave that protected him, not that it was men around him that protected him, but it was the hand of the Lord that was on his life. And somebody ought to go ahead and thank God right now that some stuff, some things, some people, some places did not destroy you because the hand of the Lord was covering you and protecting you. Is there anybody in the house or even watching online that can go ahead and testify? It was nobody but the Lord who was on your side. So David found safety and refuge in the presence of the Lord. But, but check this out. Secondly, the reason why we know that serving the Lord will pay off is because David has a portion of blessing. Somebody needs to know today that you have your own portion of blessings that God has blessed you. And what is so interesting about the life of David and how God blesses David, David has many accomplishments, but he recognizes that if it had not been for the Lord who was with him, he never would have accomplished what he accomplished. You remember David. David is first known to us by defeating a giant by the name of Goliath. David understood that he could not defeat Goliath with Saul's armor, but when you read your biblical history, you understand that David used five smooth stones. And can I submit to somebody today, you got to learn how to use what God has given you in in order to defeat some giants in your life. Stop trying to be like somebody else. Stop trying to wear what somebody else wears and learn how to wear and put on what God has fashioned and designed for you in your life. When, when Watch this. When David tried on Saul's armor, the armor was too big. Is there anybody that's grateful that God has made you to be who you are and because God has made you to be who you are, you don't have to try to be like anybody else in order for God to bless you. And see, that's where we mess up sometimes is when we're trying to do what everybody else does and try to be like everybody else. But if you learn how to be who God has called you to be, that's enough. Why? Because God made you. So, so, so David, 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 David has his portion of blessings. He defeats um, the giant by the name of Goliath. He has conquered uh, the holy city of Jerusalem. He has done marvelous things, but he understands that if it had not been for the Lord, he would have never been able to accomplish what he had accomplished. David is also known to us through his psalms because in his psalms, he begins to tell us and teach us about his relationship with God. Sometimes David sometime David got the wrath of God, but then David got the blessings of God. Is there anybody in the house today that can testify you've messed up sometime, you've made some mistakes, you hadn't always got it right, but yet the very fact that you are still alive, the very fact that you still are blessed is reason enough for you to go ahead and thank God for the portion of your blessings that belong to you. I, I like David because when David writes in the Psalms, he begins to reveal how he has messed up. He begins to reveal how he didn't always get it right. But then he lets us know that even in spite of his mess ups, God still made a way out of no way for him. And that's good news for everybody here today because even when we've made some mistakes along the way, the favor of the Lord was still on our lives. Somebody here today can testify that you have been favored by God. Everything, even though you've been through some stuff in your life, God has still blessed you and the favor of the Lord is all over your life. Do I have any witnesses here that can say I'm favored by God? How do you know you are favored by God? 
because every time you turn around, he keeps on blessing you. Every time you turn around, he keeps opening doors. Every time you turn around, he's closing some doors. Every time you turn around, when you think about how you could have and should have lost your mind, but in the middle of your struggle, in the middle of your adversity, in the middle of your pain, he began to regulate your mind. Is there anybody that can go ahead and say, Lord, I thank you for my portion of blessing. Even when I don't deserve it, you still find a way to bless me. Uh. Uh, and, and can I submit to you, um, um, sometimes your favor will make other people nervous. Uh, uh, so, so, sometimes the favor of God on your life will make other people nervous. But what they don't know is what you had to go through in order to get that favor. That, that they, they don't know the struggles you've had. That they don't know the sleepless nights and the weary days. And so the next time you judge somebody's circumstance and situation, you better get to know the story because David has some stories about how he had been through some stuff. Is there anybody here that can say, even though I might look good, even though it looked like I got it all going on, you don't know that there were some things in your life in somebody else's life that could have literally broken them. You didn't know that they were broken into pieces, but the Lord put them back together again. Is there anybody in the house that can say, I'm here not because of me, but I'm here because the Lord, he made a way. Uh, <laughs> David recognizes the portion of his of his of his blessings and and then the reason why uh, David is so blessed is because he learned how to trust in God David is so blessed because he had the heart for God uh, watch, watch this the difference between Saul and David was that David had a heart after God and Saul had a heart for fame Saul wanted to be recognized Saul wanted to be uh, um, promoted, but Saul had forgotten that it was God who put him in position in the first place. Can I help somebody here? Never forget where God has brought you from. Never forget that it was God who blessed you in the first place. And that's why he is blessed. Uh, we, we were in the pastor's conference in January um, in Atlanta, Georgia, and Dr. E. Dewey Smith um, preached a sermon entitled, uh, God Repented. And, and it was interesting because he says, um, literally, in order to suggest that God repented means that God made a mistake. And then he goes on to say, well, how can God make a mistake if he is the God of the universe, the God of heaven? Heaven, how can our God make a mistake? So in order for God to repent, it meant that God made a mistake. But then he let us know at the end of the sermon, watch this. The reason why God repented is because Saul wouldn't. And every now and then, you have to begin to understand and recognize uh, if we don't respect God, God will get his respect. Is there anybody in the house today that can say, I have what I have? not because of my education but I have what I have not because of my money I have what I have because the Lord has been good to me David had a heart after a heart after God and then David knew how to repent something that Saul wouldn't do we got to learn how to repent. Anybody ever just been sorry to God for some stuff you've done? David knew how to repent. And because of his repentance, God had mercy on David. But the final thing I want to drop in your spirit today before I get out of your way, watch this. The reason why serving the Lord pays off. I, I want to give us some tangible things that we began to understand that when you are in the struggle, that when you are in the battle and it seems like you're not making any progress, you can hold on to this knowing by faith that when you serve the Lord, not only is it paying off or it will pay off, but it's paying off right now for you. 
Finally, watch this. Um, serving the Lord will pay off because it helps us to recognize that we have an inheritance. Notice uh, what David says. David says, I have an inheritance. That David, David, when you read through the psalm, um, says he recognizes that there were some people who had paganistic ways and views and who worshiped pagan gods, false gods, false images, and false lifestyles. And David understood that those false gods, those false images, those false lifestyles could not last. And somebody needs to recognize today, don't be envious of what somebody else has going in their own yard and pay attention to what's in your yard because the grass is not always greener on the other side. And you don't know what they got underneath of there to make the grass look so green. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm, my grandfather used to um, till uh, his, his, his garden um, and uh, the neighbor next door grass was, was greener <laughs> than, than our grass. And I said, why they grass look so green? He said, because it's cow manure underneath. Sometimes you don't know what's in somebody else's yard, but if you thank God for what you have in your house and what in your yard, then you'll be blessed. Learn how to appreciate what you have. And so David understood that serving false gods would not pay off. And so David understood this because he recognized that it was his God who had been so good to him. And because David was the youngest son who had many brothers, his earthly father could not leave him an inheritance. But David thanks God because he recognizes that he has an inheritance with God every good and perfect gift that comes from above that was assigned to David God gave it to him but David also understood that not only did he have an earthly inheritance but he had a heavenly inheritance somebody ought to thank God that serving the Lord will pay off and when you serve the Lord and you live to the best of your ability and you strive after goodness and if you strive after godliness if you strive after holiness then you'll begin to understand that you have an inheritance above waiting for you is there anybody here that recognizes that this battle can get rough sometimes that the hills can get hard to climb but if you hold on a little while longer then you'll just Discover that serving the Lord will pay off. For there might be somebody in the house who is a living testimony about how serving the Lord has paid off for you. Is there anybody here with a testimony that can testify? There have been some times in your life when you didn't know where the blessing was going to come from, but you, like David, learned how to trust in the Lord uh, and serving the Lord uh, it will pay off after a while uh, and I just stopped by to encourage somebody today uh, to hang on in there uh, keep doing the work that God has assigned to you to do uh, do it to the best of your ability uh, because when you bless the Lord uh, with your service uh, the Lord will bless you with his gift is there anybody here that'll go ahead and keep serving the Lord? Is there anybody here that has made up in your mind that you're going to serve God in the good days and you'll serve God in the bad days because you've learned that serving the Lord will pay off. But somebody ought to be able to testify not that it will pay off but that it is paying off because when you look around you and you
you look how God is blessing you even in spite of your troubles somebody ought to be able to go ahead and bless his holy name and I stopped by to encourage somebody today keep on serving the Lord if the Lord called you to be an usher then keep on ushering if the Lord called you to be a stewardess then keep on doing what God has called you to do if the Lord called you to be a steward keep being a steward if the Lord called you to be a trustee keep trusting trusting in the Lord is there anybody here that has made up in your mind that I'm gonna serve the Lord if he called you to sing keep on singing if he called you to play the instruments then keep on playing the instruments if he called you to preach the unadulterated truth of the gospel whether people like it or whether they don't like it then keep on preaching is there anybody here that has made up in your mind that I'm going to serve the Lord for him I live and for him I I'll die because serving the Lord, it will, it will, it will pay off. So hold on, child of God, keep on serving, keep on doing what the Lord called you to do because you know that your reward is not in man and woman. But your reward is from the Lord. Is there anybody here that has made up in your mind in 2024? I'm going to keep serving the Lord. We just talked about last Sunday, moving from resurrection to service. God didn't do all he's done for us not to serve him. But is there anybody here that has made up in your mind? mind. I will, I will, I will serve the Lord. I will do what he asked me to do. I will trust in the Lord. I will do and go where he told me to go. Now somebody ought to be able to go ahead and praise his name. Yes, 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 yes. Keep on serving when you feel like it. Keep on serving when you don't feel like it. Somebody needs to know that when you put God first, then the Lord will. Matthew 6, 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all, not some, but all of his righteousness and all of these other things shall be added unto you. Is there anybody that believes it by faith that when you put God first, everything you've been chasing after, it now has to chase after you. Yes. If it's a job you need, put the Lord first and watch your phone start ringing. If it's something you need, then take it to the Lord because he's on the main line. If you allow me to go old school, Jesus is on the main line. Call him up and tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. If you sick and can't get well, you have to excuse me. I didn't mean to preach this hard today, but somebody needs to know that he's on the main line. And all you have to do is call him up. And when you call him up, you won't get a voicemail or the answering machine. And he may not come when you want him. But I heard, I heard, he's always on time. Is there anybody here 
that can testify he's an on time God yes he is when I needed him to show up the most he showed up right on time he's an on time God yes he is keep on serving the Lord people of God and watch God Watch God, watch God, watch God, fight your battles, watch God, heal your body, watch God, turn some things in your favor, is there anybody here that believes that our God, my God, your God, our God, He's able, he's able, he's able, yes he is, he's able to heal the sick, he's able to regulate confused minds, he's able to put money in your pocket, he's able, yes he is, yes he is. Somebody knows that he's able, he's able to forgive, he's able, he's able, he's able, yes, 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 yes he is, yes he is, yes he is. Won't it make a way? Won't it do it? Won't it do it? Won't it do it? Won't it do it? Yes! Yes! to praise him it's all right to praise him for you got a reason to praise him you got a testimony about how God brought you you got a testimony about how God saved you so go ahead a child of God and praise him praise him like you love him praise him like you need him praise him like you adore him Yes, 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 we praise you, God, and we magnify you, and we lift you up higher and higher, higher and higher, higher and higher, higher and higher, yeah. the Lord will pay off 
So keep on, child of God, trusting and believing that your labor is not in vain. And there might be somebody in the house today or even watching online who is not in right relationship with Jesus. And only what's done for Christ will last. And if you have to question whether or not you are in right relationship with Jesus, this is your opportunity to put him first. And then maybe you don't have a church home and you would like to make B.B. Memorial Cathedral your church home. We welcome you now. As the doors of the church are open, if there's one, will you come? Father God, we stretch our hands to thee for no other help we know. For God, we believe by faith today that you're able to do whatever it is that we have need of. We ask that now, God, that you would stop by every hospital, every sick bed, and begin to pour out your healing. Oh God, we ask that you cover this altar right now whatever breakthroughs, whatever blessings, whatever miracles the people have need of today. Oh God, you know each and every one individually and collectively. You know every problem. You know every circumstance. You know every situation. So do it right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, send your anointing. Send your healing. Send your blessing. And we're not going to wait until the battle is over, but we're going to go ahead and bless your holy name right now. We're going to go ahead and thank you like the miracle has already happened. We're going to go ahead and thank you like the blessing has already taken place because we believe by faith that you are able to do whatever it is that we could ever ask or think of. And now unto him, oh God, we thank you. Now in Jesus' name, pour out your blessing, pour out your breakthrough, pour out your healing in the matchless, the marvelous, the miracle working name. Jesus, we do pray, and the people of God said amen, amen, and amen again. Somebody said he's able. Yeah.
amen, he's able as we prepare to take our offering today. We thank God for how God has blessed us and our giving is a part of our worship. When we give to God, what we are saying to God is God, we're trusting you with more than just our words, but we're trusting you with what you have given to, unto us. Amen. And so as we stand, exit the outer aisles, watching online, go to Giblify. If you're giving through Giblify, go to B.B. Moore Cathedral and give because the Lord has been good to you. Give because you believe and trust that God is able. Father, we thank you this morning for the power of your word and the move of the spirit. Now we ask that you bless this offering 30, 60, and 100 fold. As we continue to build the kingdom of God, go deeper in your word and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank God and amen. Amen. Anybody know that you've been blessed? May anybody know that you've really been blessed? Amen. Stay right there. Y'all sound good. Stay right there.
I hope you are excited just as I am about today's cathedral worship experience. We're glad that you decided to join us. And in order for us to continue to provide a level of excellency uh, for this ministry, we need your help and support. So you can go to GiveLify, look up BD Memorial Cathedral, and give and bless according to how God has blessed and given to you. Thank you.